Welcome back. I'm Patty Grabeau. And as promised, we have a wonderful actress with us today, a star in Britain. And she has come here, and she is now doing some work. Actually, last week, her first show, Numbers, here in America, was aired. Would you please join me in welcoming Troy Titus Adams? Come on, baby. Woo, there she is. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi, honey. Sit down. You gorgeous creature, you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very, very well. We're delighted that you came in from Los Angeles. I know you've got a busy career going on over there. Well, I'm trying. Yeah, well, you just got here, what, four <laughs> months ago? Yep. Well, I've been here about, about five months right. now. Yes. Right. And I love every moment of it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Now, you just, you just finished your numbers. What was, that, what, was, what was that like working on the set? Um, well, that was amazing, actually, uh, to be my first uh, guest star right. role um, in the U.S. And um, I played a museum curator. So, uh, yes, talking about beautiful vases. And uh, a couple of the guys on the set, um, Dylan and Alimi, were saying, are you going to say vase or are you going to say vase? And vase I said, well, I'll say vase. <laughs> You'll say vase here. <laughs> and we have some, it looks like something from the EastEnders coming up. Um, all the music video. I don't know. I think this Who may knows? be the EastEnders coming up. Or the music video. <laughs> or the music video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? what? Could you be the only one for me? Take a care and see that all I need is someone to be there for me. Would you stay around if times got bad? Even when I'm sad, cause all I need is someone to be there for me. But you were real and you needed me. And I suppose being there for you is what I needed. But if the circumstances were different, I'm not sure we'd still be together. And people should be in relationships because they want to be, not because they need to be. I don't know anyone called Elaine. You don't know anyone called Elaine. Yet someone called Elaine called the house. Maybe it was a wrong number. Then why leave a message? I don't know. Listen, Wesley, I put up with a lot from you recently, but when it comes to other women, that's it. What other women? You tell me. There ain't no other women. I love that character. <laughs> Woo! I don't want to mess with her. Now, who was that character? Um, who was that? Uh, that was Pamela. Pamela. Pamela, who suspected that her uh, husband was cheating on her. But in fact, he was a writer, and he was in the middle of writer's block, and he was writing a script. But she, of course, thought he was cheating with another woman. So that's what that scene was that's, all about. That's great. Now, was that part of EastEnders? Because I can't see the number one soap in, in, in the BBC right now. So was that the character you played in EastEnders? Um, actually, that's not. That's a film that I produced. Oh, you I did? I co-produced that. That was one of my first shorts that I co-produced. How fantastic. So, um, yes, but he was in EastEnders with me. He was actually my co-star. So, or one of them. So, that's great. Yeah. Now, how did you... Tr I know I, I want... I have so much I want to talk to you about. You started <laughs> off as a dancer. Yes, I did. I um, started tap dancing at the age of three and continued on with ballet, jazz and contemporary and then went into uh, musical theatre and, and did that and toured to get my equity card. So, uh, and yeah. where did you, how did you get your equity card? Um, in the circus. In the circus? <laughs> what did you do in the circus? Um, I was a Manhattan showgirl. Uh, part of the uh, New York showgirls, fully clothed, I might add. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> what is a New York showgirl? Um, it means you do lots of high kicks. Okay, okay. Um, and like a rocket. Wear, yeah. Like a rocket, right. and you wear lots of gorgeous costumes right. with feathers, um, and uh, you do 14 shows a week. And that's four a lot shows of work. a day that sometimes. That is a lot of Absolutely. work. I know that. I, I used to do sometimes six shows a day, but only 30 minutes, and, and nothing, and nothing like that. And then, I, did, didn't you give up your dance career to be an actress? Um, I did. Um, I don't, actually, I haven't really given up my dance career, yeah. except that I dance in the kitchen now. As opposed <laughs> and to you danced out. Especially. And you yes, and I dance out. out every opportunity that I get. Um, but yes, I, I wanted to go into acting because I've always loved acting and at, at drama school um, when I trained and did musical theatre, you do it all, you do all the disciplines, you sing, you dance, you act and I gravitated first towards dancing and then to the acting. The acting. So. And, but 
what, what I give you such credit for is what I was saying on the open, is that you really have, uh, you have your foundation. And Lorreen Tuttle, uh, the acting coach I studied with many years ago in Los Angeles, said you have to have your foundation. But it's true of anything in life. You can't, you can't expect to get ahead with, with having a little bit of talent. You have to have things to fall back on, such as knowing improvisation or knowing uh, classic, classical drama, how to, how, to, how to pull a character out. Is there any particular type of study that helped you more than another? Um, I think once you've attended drama school, they really kind of, they break you down as a person to, to build you back up again uh, so that you can analyze characters and, and read scripts. Um, in a specific way, right. and 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 really hone in on the characters, you know, positive points, flaws, so on and so forth, and and doing all all kinds of genres. Uh, you know, we start with Shakespeare, of course, the right. classics and the Greeks, and we do the moderns, the Chekhovs. So you do it all, and I think every every um, genre lends itself to to making a great actor. I well, see. I agree with you. And do you think you bring? more to the table than an American actress because you have studied the, like you said, the Shakespeare all the way down. And not to mean Shakespeare's the ultimate, but, but you've studied so many different levels. Well, I think, I think it wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't differentiate between an American actor and a, a British actor only in actors who've trained and not trained. Okay. Um, there is a huge emphasis here in the U.S., which I love, um, about continuing your training mm -hmm. everyone has a coach you go to class it's you know it's wonderful at home you study your three years four years get your degree and then right. you kind of go on to work but you don't actually work out and and continue on you know honing your craft and that's what I love about American actors or their attitude towards their craft so I, I think I think it's um, a, a, a well-trained US actor and a well-trained UK actor are a, a, a singing from the same hymn sheet, as it were. Which is wonderful, so which, 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 important. Which, which is important. You have, mm. to, you, have to, you have to keep honing that craft. Mm. Like, like an attorney, I know my husband goes to conferences. He, he has to go to conferences right. to get hours. And how else can you, you maintain your, your, uh, some, some kind of a, a wonderful level to be able to give people service if you're not really honing your Absolutely. skill? Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to hear more from Troy Titus Adams.